uh, for many of these items. Um, I, I would move uh, the staff recommendation on the following items, 5, 7, 9, 10, 11, 16, and 17. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Let's vote. Bloom. Aye. Bigelow. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Patterson. Aye. Williams. Aye. Items are out. I would move the staff recommendation on the following items, uh, 8, 12, 14, and 18. Second. If there's no discussion, we'll have a vote on that. Bloom? Aye. Bigelow? No. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? No. Williams? Aye. It's three to two. I would um, move the um, staff recommendation on issue number two. Second. Discussion? We'll vote. Bloom? Aye. Bigelow? Gordon? Uh, aye. Patterson? Not Williams? Aye. That's three votes. Um, on issue number four, a, a quick question. I want to ascertain um, for making the motion. Um, the staff recommendation would move this. Would, would if we approve the staff recommendation, this would end up in conference committee. Yes. Okay. Yep. Given that, I would it would move item number four then. I'll, I'll second. I'll. Uh... <laughs> Just, just add that I, I still think that that I would ask uh, Director Pimlot to to show um, whoever is named a conference why this funding level is necessary. Um, uh, you know, it is transition of a program. It's a much larger amount of money, um, and so I, I still think that the I would ask the director to to demonstrate why this amount um, is needed and why a lesser amount would be insufficient. All right. Thank you. Any other comments on this? We have a motion and a second. Mr. Bigelow? Thank you. I, I agree with the maker of the motion and the second on their their concerns. I, I raise those as myself. I can't get there today, but, um, you know, we'll get to see this again and, and, and have this a stronger, more robust debate. And I hope that Mr. Pimlot will be able to answer those questions. Um, and better at that time, and maybe everyone can come together and have a, a better result. All right, thank you. So uh, why don't we vote on this one now? This is issue four. Bloom? Aye. Bigelow? No. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? No. Williams? Aye. About three to two. And is there another motion? Yeah, uh, I would move the staff recommendation for item number six. Discussion? Let's vote. Bloom? Aye. Bigelow? Gordon? Aye. Patterson? Williams? Aye. It's three votes. Okay. Uh, the next several motions I'm um, going to make, I'm going to uh, split some issues within or some items within the issues. Um, so starting with issue number one, um, I'm going to move that we approve the staff recommendation uh, for CAL FIRE for the Department of Water Resources and the Public Utilities Commission. And um, as I do that, I also want to comment, um, I, continue to be very concerned um, with the um, approach the Public Utilities Commission is taking to biomass. And um, um, the staff recommendation here uh, um, encourages the um, acceleration of the utilization of biomass materials. Um, 
we have got to make sure that uh, the small biomass facilities in the state are not lost. Uh, and um, given uh, the uh, timber-related issues and the um, uh, you know forest health or lack thereof, um, we have to have these biomass facilities. The PUC has got to step up and um, uh, assure that the uh, IOUs are doing their part to take the energy that the biomass facilities create. So um, I'm going to move this, but I am uh, still remain very concerned that the PUC is not being aggressive enough uh, in working on this issue. Second. All right. Well, we have a motion and a second. Let's vote. Bloom? Aye. Bigelow? Yes. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? Aye. Williams? Aye. It's five to zero. Um, Again, on, on issue number one, relative to the emergency drought response, I would move uh, the staff recommendation related to the Department of Water Resources. Uh, Second. I think uh, th that way you mean Fish and Wildlife. I'm, oh, we I'm already sorry. did DWR. Excuse, I'll yeah. try that again. DFW, Department of Fish and Wildlife. I'll move that one, since we already did the other as, one. As, as I often say, we live in acronym hell in Sacramento. <laughs> Too many Ds and Ws. Right. Hey, doing fine work. So, uh, uh, yeah, so the motion is uh, issue number one, uh, staff recommendation for the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second um, and some chuckles. Uh, let's vote. Bloom? Aye. Bigelow? No. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? No. Williams? Aye. Three to two. Now, issue number three, um, I would move the staff recommendation related to the State Water Resources Control Board. Second. Let's vote. Bloom? Aye. Bigelow? Aye. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? Aye. Williams? Aye. Five to zero. Uh, on issue number three, uh, I would uh, move the staff recommendation related to the Department of Toxic Substances Control. Second. All right. Let's vote on that. Bloom? Aye. Bigelow? Aye. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? Aye. Williams? Aye. It's out. <clears throat> Almost there. Uh, issue number 15, um, I would move the staff uh, recommendation relative to the um, uh, clean bus and advanced clean cars proposals. Um, so it's the clean truck and bus standards and the advanced clean cars program uh, move approval of staff recommendation. Second. We'll vote on that now. Bloom? Aye. Bigelow? Aye. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? Not voting. Williams? Aye. Four votes. It's out. Uh, and then uh, finally, I would uh, move the staff recommendation related uh, on uh, issue uh, number 15 related to the um, short lived climate pollutant proposal. Second. Let's vote. Bloom? Aye. Bigelow? No. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? No. Williams? Aye. So that leaves issue number 13, and we've had a request to remove that from the vote only calendar. We will uh, uh, accommodate that request. I'll re accommodate that request, and we'll hear that at the conclusion of the items to be heard. Speaking of which, We'll now uh, begin with uh, the Department of uh, Parks and Recreation issue number one, the Pacific Coast Immigration Center.
Good morning. Go ahead and proceed. Uh, I'm not sure who's uh, leading off the presentation, but um, feel free to. Let's, yeah, this is uh, Brian Dew with State Parks. Um, on the agenda, you have um, a legislative proposal to uh, switch funding for the Angel Island Immigration Station. It was approved in the 15-16 budget uh, for reimbursements. I believe we have uh, proponents for the project um, here to uh, speak. To the yes, so we should hear from the proponents. Right. Can we uh, can we make uh, room for them at the table? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Welcome. Uh, I'm not sure who wants to go first, but if you'd I'll, introduce I'll yourself and I'll go first. let us know about this proposal. So, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission Committee. Um, my name is Buck G. I'm past president of the Angel Island Immigration Station Foundation, um, current chair of the Open Doors Committee, which is the fundraising arm of the Commission, and a member of the Committee of 100. Uh, we've been working with state parks for over a decade now on restoring buildings to the site, and this is really the latest um, building we're trying to trying to restore and open as a new museum. And let me let me make a couple comments why I think it's important. Because I, I hope you realize that that Angel Island is essentially the Asian Ellis Island. Uh, it's a place where over a million Asians came through in the early 20th century, um, and 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 so far we've been collecting those stories. But that's not enough, because now there are 17 million Asian Americans in the United States. And uh, rather than just telling the story of a million that went through Angel Island, it's our goal to tell the, the story of the 17 million here after the Angel Island period. So the story of the 1960s, where Chinese un uh, family un unification happened, the stories of the, of the uh, South Vietnamese immigrants after, World War, after the war, the story of the Chinese uh, Chinese who came from the mainland in the 1990s to come to, and the Indians who came to Silicon Valley, where Silicon Valley is now half of the high-tech population is now Asian American. So it's those stories that we want to tell, not just what happened on Asia Island. It's a story of success, the contribution the Asian Americans have made in the in the past half century, and and we want to tell that in, in the context of the site of the immigration station where a different story was told about Asian Americans 100 years ago. And that, that provides both the context and the con and juxtaposition of success of the Asian Americans and the, and the view of Asian Americans in American history to show you how America has evolved and to tell you both, both stories past and present. So that's why we're working with state parks to, uh, to renovate the new building, which is almost done. And we're going to use the, the additional funds to really open the building as a center for Pacific Coast immigration to tell the news stories of immigrants. So I'll, I'll let the executive director, uh, Michael McKechnie, take more details. Well, thank you, Buck, and, and, and thank you, Mr. Chair and members, for uh, hearing us today about this important project. Uh, I, I want to, first of all, affirm that this project is one that is being done in very close partnership with the Department of Parks and Recreation. Uh, we have an MOU with DPR. We've been working with them for 30-some years. Um, and in addition to fundraising for the building restoration, uh, we've also agreed to fundraise for ongoing operational funds for the Pacific Coast Immigration Center once it's open. Um, we will be fundraising to develop and support innovative programs, exhibits, and culture-specific uh, celebrations in that particular uh, part of the island. And in addition to this, we're developing a robust um, online piece that, so that, for example, children all over America can learn this part of the national story of American immigration. Um, just yesterday I spoke to our local DPR leadership uh, about the project and the fact that we were coming to the subcommittee today and she affirmed that this is an important project, uh, the Pacific Coast Immigration Center, and that DPR supports it and would like to see it completed. With all the funds already provided, $11 million, Almost 6,600 square feet of the 10,000 square foot structure uh, is nearing completion. So we have about 40 percent left to be completed. And uh, when that is done, the building will still be empty. So we need to furnish it. We need to make it become an active center. We need to build exhibits. 
As the analysis indicates, this uh, subcommittee approved funding earlier this year that's in the governor's budget uh, related to the project. Uh, there, that proposal included $342,000 in DPR's base funding proposal to, uh, to staff the building once it is completed. So uh, our one-time request rounds out some of the decisions that have already been made about making this available to the public. The other advantage um, to funding the completion of this is, is that in two ways this becomes an income producing item. Uh, first, on site we plan a cafe. It will be the only uh, food outlet on that part of the island. And second, uh, DPR is uh, closing in on, on discussions about building um, cabins and on, a, on the site immediately adjacent to um, the, uh, the, the building that we're talking about restoring so that this then bodes well for the future of having this as a conference center which can obviously also produce rental income. And so we know that finding uh, these kinds of mission-centric revenue generators is important to this committee the legislature and the, and the department, and so we believe this provides a great model for that. And so uh, we thank you for your consideration, and we respectfully request your support. Thank you. Uh, uh, does uh, Department of Finance or LAO have comments? Yeah, Phil Osborne from the Department of uh, Finance. We uh, do not uh, support this as proposed. Uh, we would prefer that uh, the uh, parks in uh, with its uh, backers continue to uh, seek uh, outside contributions to allow this to be uh, fulfilled. We do support the construction. All right, thank you. Uh, LAO, no comments. Is there any public comment? Additional public comment? All right, seeing none, uh, then this item is before us. Let me uh, uh, start off the discussion by uh, uh, saying, uh, uh, just how important it is, uh, I think, uh, how important it is to have um, facilities like this that allow us to reconnect to our heritage and our, our history, uh, to allow not just descendants but uh, uh, the general public to learn about the, the broad history. Um, it's a, a somewhat different setting in a different circumstance uh, uh, in Ellis Island, but it, it uh, I think, shows us um, really what, what can be. Uh, I can also point to an experience that uh, my wife and son uh, just yesterday completed, having uh, spent uh, about uh, 10 days uh, in Frankfurt, Germany, where they have a program uh, to return uh, uh, children and grandchildren of victims of the Holocaust to um, see historical sites, review archives, um, uh, and uh, uh, reconnect with uh, uh, with family history. Uh, an, an extraordinarily deep and moving experience for them, which would not be possible were it not for the efforts of the city of Frankfurt in, uh, in making that happen. It's an ongoing program there. Um, so Ellis Island is different from Angels Island. It's different from the program that, that I was just referring to. But they all serve this extraordinarily important purpose um, uh, that I think so many of us uh, from different walks of life can relate to. It helps uh, us to not forget our history, both positive and negative. Uh, it helps reconnect uh, in individuals. And there are just an extraordinary number of benefits, including um, if this proposal that's before us today comes to full fruition, uh, providing a conference center that uh, 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 creates some co-benefits from the program. So uh, this is something that I would strongly support. Move the staff Mr. recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Williams? I just wanted to say, you know, uh, uh, in uh, one of my capacities, I am chair of the uh, Asian Pacific Islander Legislative Caucus. and. And from our perspective, or from my perspective, this is just an important part of the shared heritage of many peoples who have come um, uh, to you know the West Coast of the United States to um, achieve a better life for themselves and their families. And it's great. With that, we'll move to a vote. Bloom. Aye. Bigelow. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Patterson. Aye. Williams. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Very much. 
Issue number two uh, under the uh, ARB is the uh, Specialty Equipment Marketing Association Executive Order fee proposal. I think we have some proponents here on this item as well. And if you would like to have a seat at the table to make your presentation, we'd be happy to hear it. And we'll begin with, uh, I think it makes more sense to hear from the proponents and then okay. uh, perhaps get the ARB's Great. response. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And members, uh, Chuck Cole with the uh, Specialty Equipment Market Association, the aftermarket auto uh, industry. We have uh, a very successful partnership with the ARB. It is the testing process for equipment that's sold, and it becomes 50 state compliant, and it, that includes US EPA. Uh, we established this back in 1970s when it was established. Um, it, again, was money out of the um, automotive uh, tax uh, base and fee base, and uh, it, there were no fees charged for that process. There, uh, the manufacturers will develop a new product submit it to the Air Resources Board, have it reviewed, they issue a test letter, the testing uh, is conducted, and uh, results are submitted, and at the end of that process, an executive order for each part uh, is issued with the ability to use that part on particular types of vehicles. Uh, the success of our efforts, uh, I think, have led to a very, very good public-private <coughs> partnership with the ARB and the industry. Uh, we are experiencing delays in some of those EOs for the aftermarket auto parts. It takes as long as 24 months from the time that an application is submitted until the final EO is issued. And frankly, that time to market is having an adverse impact on our manufacturers, many of whom are located in California. Uh, our headquarters is down in Diamond Bar. Uh, we created something called the SEMA Garage, which allows us to help applicants uh, develop their application and get it submitted in a timely fashion. We've reduced that turnaround time uh, in the overall process. We also are doing the testing for many of those products as well after a test letter has been issued and instructions are included there for the types of testing to be done. Uh, we would love to have that time frame in totality be four to six months to do that frankly they need additional resources um, I know that you know while our first preference would probably be to have had a, a BCP approved uh, in the absence of that we want to make a major commitment on behalf of the industry to provide some fee-based resources so that they can turn around uh, those applications in a more timely fashion uh, our, our members are frankly being beaten by others to market who aren't going through that process uh, we're concerned about two things. We want to make sure that the, the level of the fee doesn't discourage people from coming in and applying for those EO programs because that helps the, our air quality. And in addition to that, um, we want to make sure that the level of staffing is sufficient to actually have an impact on turning things around faster. Uh, they now have eight uh, staffers in, in that regard, and I think that we're looking at adding to that level. Um, we had a very successful um, meeting yesterday with the ARB, and again, let me emphasize the collegiality and the, the good-natured discussion that went on there. Uh, I think that we're going to identify the level of uh, staffing needed in order to turn things around faster and the uh, appropriate fees for that. We would strongly support your effort to put in uh, the placeholder uh, trailer bill language now, and our hope would be we could wrap this up in time to get it in the budget. In the absence of that, we would be hoping to come back before the session is concluded. But time is of the essence. Um, frankly, they're going to be moving that, that lab uh, from their current location uh, of the ARB lab to UC Riverside, which I think is a, a real plus for all of us. But in addition to that, I think it's going to take some of the staff time to focus on that transition in the next four and a half years. So our hope would be that we could move it forward uh, now with sufficient resources to really try to get that backlog down. Great, thank you. Uh, so did uh, ARB want to add some comments or respond? Sure. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. I'm Edie Chang. I'm a Deputy Executive Officer at the Air Resources Board. Uh, we support the concept of assessing a fee for the certification of aftermarket parts and appreciate SEMA bringing this issue forward in the committee's consideration here today. We've been discussing uh, a number of issues with SEMA about its proposal, including the current time it takes 
on average for ARB to review the aftermarket part applications, the number of staff we currently devote to this work, and the time by which we could reduce the review process with a specified number of additional staff. Um, conversations have been very productive and they are continuing and we're committed to working with SEMA to develop a proposal that advances our mutual objectives. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Department of Finance? Christine Casey, Department of Finance. Notwithstanding the merits of the proposal, we believe that discussions for this are still in the early stages and we need more information to figure out what the outcomes will be, how we will address the backlog and what the increased process time for the EOs will be and what the impacts are on the Air Resources Board and the resources required to implement the proposal. Thank you. LAO, any comments? None. Is there any public comment? <coughs> Excuse me. Seeing none, this item's before us. Is there a discussion, Mr. Patterson? So we, we, maybe there's not any answers to the question. How much is the fee going to be, and will the fee cut the time to the six months necessary? Um, do we have any hard numbers and any hard timelines? I think our meeting yesterday led us to uh, some initial conclusions. We're going to get validated numbers in the, the next, within the next week, I think, and look at a level that would be acceptable to the industry and acceptable to ARB. Um, at this moment, we don't have that. Uh, this issue surfaced very late, unfortunately, in the budget cycle, but uh, we're so anxious to try to move quickly. Sure. And, and I, I might add, we're doing things on steps that are not the responsibility of ARB, the, the pre-application and the testing process to shorten our time frames as well. So it's a, it's a wonderful, um, I think, ideal win-win for ARB, uh, for our, our manufacturers, uh, and the, we are willing to pay those fees in order to expedite it. Uh, it needs to be a reasonable fee because we don't want people saying, I'm not gonna, I'll wait and be fined down the line. That's why there's no fee associated with the applications now. But in order to get the time down, I think it's, this is a, a viable way of looking to some additional resources that could would, come in. Would you say in the cordial and productive discussions that you have ballpark numbers? We, we talked about And a ballpark timeline. I'm trying to get to the bottom line. You're gonna be voluntarily putting more fees on yourselves I'm assuming that gets passed along eventually to those who would be buying that aftermarket to some degree. Um, I would say I'm generally sympathetic if you want to tax yourselves and trust the ARB to come in on time. Uh, good luck. <laughs> but I would like to really explore whether or not this is a realistic approach where you're going to get down to six months. I ARB? I would just echo that we are having these conversations and the, the purpose of those conversations is to make sure that um, we're clear about sort of what everybody's expectations are and that we can deliver on those expectations. So if we add a specific number of people that we can be clear about, here's how that will change, you know, how, how much time it takes us to do that processing. Um, I think it's also been mentioned and I think it, it really, this is a very good mutual cooperation because um, the industry is also looking at what it can do on its side to have applications that are more complete and that we can act on more quickly. So I think it really has been a very good cooperative process and we're very pleased with it. Okay. A couple of numbers that I would be willing to share, I think. Um, we talked about trying to reduce it from two-year turnaround to one year to nine months and then ideally down to six months. Uh, how, how that occurs depends really on how much of a backlog truly exists now. Um, additionally, we, lo we were looking at some numbers uh, with maybe a base fee. The number that was, I think, thrown out was $500 for a base fee. And then with each additional number that you want, an EO on an application, it could be $50. So you could get in the range of uh, $2,000 um, for an application. The truth of the matter is, to the extent it would accelerate it, um, that, that's a great way to go because once the EO is issued, you may say sell 200,000 of those parts, you know, and, and so it's generating sales tax for the state. There's truly a lot of wins in this if we can make it happen successfully. I, I want to make sure I understand. What, are you talking about adding to the fee in order to cut the time? Yeah, I, you did. I did, didn't hear that you're let, let that you that you were trying to buy down 
the time by additional fees voluntarily added? Uh, w what we don't want to do is leave someone at the end of the line who did something in a different fashion. We don't really want to pay the fee um, on a selective basis to get expedited treatment. We want the entire process okay. to move faster. We don't want to harm anyone in line. All right. And one follow-up just to the uh, uh, finance. Uh, would you, again, quickly explain your objections to this? I thought I heard something to the degree that you want to determine whether this would uh, – slow down other significant uh, responsibilities and duties of the Air Board? We don't have a particular objection to that, mainly just that this discussion is in the early stages. So as they're saying, they're still working out how this will work and what, what the fees will look like and how much there is a backlog and how much it will be addressed and how quickly these will move forward. So there's just a lot of unknowns, and for that reason, we don't really have an official position. Okay. I'm finished. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Did I ask for public comment? I think I did. Thank you. Good go. Then let's did vote. Uh, uh, no, we need a motion. Uh, I'll move the staff recommendation if an industry wants to tax itself um, or pay a fee. Yes. I think it's a fee. Um, <laughs> and uh, they're at the table working on this. Um, I would, um, uh, would support them. So I move the staff recommendation. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. We'll proceed to vote. Bloom? Aye. Bigelow? No. Gordon? Aye. Patterson? Not Bloom. Williams? Aye. Mr. Chair, I would note in my 43 years in Sacramento, I haven't had too many issues quite like this one. Uh, so it, it is unique. Thank you all for your consideration. That's what makes life interesting. Our uh, last item of the day is the Department of Resources, Recycling, and Recovery Temporary Bottle Fix Bill Fix to address the recycling center closures that we've seen around the state. I think Mr. Gordon is uh, prepared to provide us with some uh, introductory comments on this. If I might, uh, Mr. Chair, you thank might. you very much. Uh, oh, it's not our last item, by the way. We still have issue 13. Correct. So um, correct myself. I've... Uh, uh, over the last, uh, as Mr. Gordon is uh, is presenting, if we have uh, proponents, uh, please step forward, have a seat at the table. If we could make some room for, we have 